As a form of expression, music has a special place in art and media history. It's one of the oldest mediums we have, it's one of the simplest to enjoy, and we can experience it anywhere from a concert to on our phones whilst taking the bus. But music is also interesting because it's one of the most malleable to interpretation. Because the stimulus is limited purely to audio, there are a lot less specifics to muddy the water. No shot composition, no visual cues, and no sly winks at the camera. If a song goes beyond just expressing a simple emotion like, say, misery or love, the listener will then tend to apply their own feelings to it, and find their own sense of meaning within the music. Of course, if you're very familiar with an artist in their work, you can easily decipher what the motivation beneath their lyrics are, and sometimes that behind-the-scenes drama can overshadow and even eliminate the personal touch we as an audience take away from their music. I mean, when you look at it, most popular music these days is just the artists feuding with each other over behind-the-scenes bullshit. How am I supposed to relate to that? But in today's case, we're dealing with an artist who's trying to tell something very specific, often in a very direct way, and yet the true meaning of her words went unnoticed until fairly recently. I'm of course talking about Laura Jane Grace and her band, Against Me. originally hailing from Florida, Against Me has been rocking their tunes about teenage anarchy and revolutionist ideals since the late 90s. But for the majority of the band's career, frontwoman Grace wasn't, in a certain sense, anywhere to be seen. To the public eye, Against Me was led by this guy. However, behind the eyes of this talented but introverted musician was someone dealing with a shaky upbringing, turmoil amongst the band members, a troubled history with sex and drugs and rock and roll, and a very severe case of gender dysphoria. Grace fell into the punk scene because it sought to break down the system, the pervading but ultimately arbitrary norms of our society by which she felt controlled. However, the fragmented views of the punk scene saw her band either hailed as one of the greats, or trashed for being corporate sellouts. Along with general feelings of depression and isolation, this meant she stayed in the closet until her early 30s, affecting how her music was conceived and interpreted. Grace had to put on a front and be what the world expected from the frontman of a punk band, whilst the real voice hiding inside only got the chance to break through in her lyrics. Now I'm not going to go into full summation of Grace's life. If you want that, track down her autobiography, Tranny. It's a fantastic look inside a dysphoric mind, and just a really great rock bio too. What I do want to highlight today is how Grace's music was always laced with this sense of inner turmoil since the beginning of her career. Against Me's music may sound like it's full of anarchic symbolism, but much of Grace's lyrics are direct references to events in her life. For one example, the song Black Me Out features the lyric, This on the surface may seem like a metaphorical act for going against the system, but in reality it's something Grace's father would literally do when he came home drunk. With this in mind, it's easier to understand how Grace actually managed to get away with some of the lyrics she had without outing herself for so long. Much of Against Me's early music is all about rejecting society, saying screw you to the system, and inciting socio-political revolution, which are all givens in the punk scene, but clearly meant more to Grace than simple anarchy. Going back and listening to these tracks with what we know now, it's hard not to read into what may have actually been going on in her head when these lyrics were constructed. Grace's first direct reference to her dysphoria came in the title track to the 2005 album, Searching for a Former Clarity. Confessing childhood secrets Of dressing up in women's clothes Compulsions you never knew The reasons to it's pretty blatant now in retrospect, ain't it? But at the time, she got away with it. The song on the surface seems like it's about someone dying of a horrible disease, which does have some real life basis. Grace was struggling with her health at the time from years of drug and alcohol abuse. However now, these lyrics about being rejected by your friends as your body starts to deteriorate seems to be less about disease and more about the fear of transitioning. As the disease spreads slowly through your body, Pump by your heart to the tips of your arms and your legs. Your greatest fear was that your mind wouldn't last. The coherency and alertness would be the first thing to fade. Grace's next major flirtation with outing herself again came from the closing track of an album, this time 2007's New Wave. The song The Ocean starts off being fairly literal about what the title suggests, but then the second verse goes way off topic. So now this 
song too has blatantly become about Grace's suppressed feelings. And yet again, no one at the time seemed to notice. Grace just wrote it off saying that she wrote the lyrics while she was high. Sure, I'd probably have done the same thing in that situation. The two themes are then brought together in the repeated final words. There is an ocean in my soul where the waters do not curve. Which means... Perhaps the ocean represents Grace's outer self, and the soul obviously her inner self, and the ocean does not curve because her then male body did not curve like a cis woman's body naturally curves. And I officially have no idea what I'm talking about. Laura Jane Grace, if you happen to be watching this, I'm sorry if I mangled your intentions. But even in songs not explicitly addressing the issue, there is something to be read into several songs off the New Wave album. Thrash and Real is about a woman with many parallels to Grace's own life. Lyrics like, we do what we do to get by and then we need a release, and no mother ever dreams that her daughter's going to grow up to sleep alone, could easily be read as metaphors for, respectively, the indulging and purging cycle many closeted trans people go through, and the obliviousness parents of trans people often are to their children's habits. In fact, Grace at the time even suggested doing a music video in drag, but the label turned her down. Seriously, cis people. How did you not catch on to this? Meanwhile, Stop may be more obviously about being careful when dealing with fame or politics, but could also be seen as being about cautiousness when coming out, questioning how this is going to affect your life and the people around you. And whilst her collaboration with Tegan Quinn, Born on the FM Waves of the Heart, doesn't obliquely reference the subject, it's amusing in retrospect to realise that this song is actually being sung to each other by two lesbians. Then in 2012, the game changer came. Laura Jane Grace officially came out in the pages of Rolling Stone, bringing a whole new light to her life and music. Two years later, her first post-transition album could now openly deal with a subject that previously had to be masked. Its title and cover art certainly didn't beat around the bush either. Transgender Dysphoria Blues is Grace's way to stop with the metaphors and let out her feelings, and the rawness and clarity of the emotions on display here is a strong contrast to her earlier work. Just compare the lyrics from an earlier Against Me song, Violence, Oh, you've been keeping secrets and these kind of lies have consequences. To some choice quotes from TDB. You are there with all this. Like an end to your subconscious. You want them to say you love like to see you be other girl. Grace's coming out in the subsequent album quickly turned her into a trans icon, which is a position she's thankful for, but also somewhat reticent about. I think like most trans people, Grace is relieved that her identity is finally out there, but at the same time she doesn't want that to overshadow her actual accomplishments. Transgender Dysphoria Blues may be mainly about that in its various tracks, but it also deals with the loss of a dear friend and her love for her daughter. Against Me's follow-up, Shapeshift With Me, also touches on trans topics with songs like Boyfriend and delicate, petite, and other things I'll never be, but it otherwise moves back towards the band's usual topics. However, it now has a renewed sense of enlightenment. No longer shackled by the expectations of a male-dominated punk scene, Grace's music feels much more alive, more hopeful. She's no longer struggling to spell out the message. And at least to me, that's why Laura Jane Grace, even if she isn't fully comfortable with the idea, is such a strong trans role model. She is speaking her truth without shame or entitlement. I think her punk background has a lot to do with that. Even before Grace transitioned, she was never the type to let her beliefs and ideals fall to the wayside. For example, the band was once duped into performing at a show that was partially sponsored by the military. A staunch anti-war advocate who would have never agreed to the gig if she'd known, Grace proceeded to protest their sponsor before continuing with the performance. She wants to give her fans the show they expected, but wouldn't let her beliefs down either. To know that someone that resolute had a secret they thought was shameful, yet is now able to speak their truth without fear, is inspiring all on its own and not just to trans people. It's a message of defiance that you're going to live your life the way you want, in spite of everyone else, and that more than anything that Grace has done in either of her lives is truly punk rock. So if you're an artist struggling with identity, don't be afraid to speak your truth. Tell your story. Show the world who you really are. 
And if you live in an environment that won't let you, don't let that stop you. Get creative. Find ways of expressing your inner self. And when you finally decide it's time to flip that switch, your work may take on a whole new meaning. Because at the end of the day, all art is subjective, but that doesn't mean you can't leave the clues to your truth.